Good evening everyone and welcome to the video. My name is Samil Shah. In this video, I want to share a summary. I have been reading a lot of articles and blogs. Uh, for example, uh, which, uh, for example, I really wanted to know, uh, is there a difference when we use an x86 architecture on Lambda versus an ARM architecture? Uh, what's the, what's the, for example, uh, you know, execution time? How does memory influence uh, the speed of Lambda? So I wanted to read all these things and I wanted to go deep. So I would like to share a couple of the results with you. I have made beautiful slides. And by the way, I have went through so many articles, as you can see. Uh, let me bring it down. So all these articles I have read and, you know, I have went through them. I have summarized them. I have cited everything properly. As you can see, I have I've been through very, very lot of articles. All, 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 every articles have been cited, are properly cited. So let's get started. So this is a summary essentially about AWS Lambda Battle X Series 6 versus ARM. I would be providing you a summary of what these gentlemen have done in their articles and blogs. Um, as I've mentioned, right, everything has been cited, right? So you'll see all, all the materials have been properly cited. Uh, this one is taken from Mr. Beswick James, uh, Operating Lambda Performance Optimization Part 2. That's the article. So here this essentially sh shows you a cold start, right? When essentially your Lambda starts, right? So this is how the cold start works. Oops, sorry. I really wanted to take a pen so maybe I can draw things down the line. So as you can see, right, uh, the blue portion over here is the cold start duration and then your functions are ready and then that's when it executes, right? So I wanted to dive deep. How does um, architecture influences uh, the cold start, right? So I started reading. So the first thing that I, f I found is Mr. James Beswick states that provisional concurrency is the preferred approach for ensuring the lowest possible latency if you need a uh, known function start timing for your workload. This feature keeps your function in initialized in the warm, ready to respond in the double digit millisecond at scale uh, you provision. Uh, unlike on demand lambda function this means that all use uh, all uh, this means that all the setup activities happens ahead of invocation including running and initializing the code so by doing that you are essentially uh, eliminating this part right uh, but remember provisional concurrency comes at a cost then i i went further and i read more articles and then i'm like okay so according to mr um, Pokka Danello, in his article published, uh, he states that Lambda function on AWS Graviton2 processor is at the heart of his system. Use ARM to run your function and get a 34% better price and performance. So using ARM, you can get 34% better price and performance. Author further states that the Lambda function powered by Graviton2 are designed to deliver up to 19% better performance at 20% lower cost. Function using ARM Graviton 2 architecture duration charges charges are 20% lower than the current pricing of for x86. Function using the ARM uh, function using the ARM architecture benefits from performance and security built into Graviton 2 processor. Uh, so that's what the author states, right? So ARM is clearly a winner. Um, as I'll sh keep showing you all the graph. Um, this is this graph has been formulated. Uh, the data has been taken from Mr. Flinch uh, of, on his article AWS Lambda Battle x86 versus arm what you observe from the graph is uh, as you can see the yellow one is the arm processor and as you can see the cold start for the arm is less than the uh, that of x86 so the blue is the x86 so that's a very important conclusion that you can derive from this graph uh, these are various programming languages uh, so i have essentially circled the one in python uh, with a red box uh, to to show you a little bit more um, i have a zoomed version mm -hmm. A beautiful conclusion that can be derived from this is, um, sorry for that, a beautiful conclusion that's derived from this is, as the memory increases, as you can see, as the memory increases, the cold start time decreases. But remember, increasing memory means increasing cost as well. You want to find a suitable sweet spot for your application. So a very important conclusion that you could drive from this graph. Mr. Um, uh, Alexander recommends to switch to ARM-based uh, a runtime for faster speed and better cost and further states that python has a stable good performance but works slow on 128 M megabytes of memory so don't use 128 mb in your lambda function i is everyone is talking that it the performance is not good for 128 megabytes that's what i have been reading and um, uh, seeing again this is another graph that has been derived from the data from mr beswick james in operating operating lambda performing optimization part 2 
on this graph also mr james is supporting the theory of mr alexander as you can see as essentially uh, memory is increasing the execution time is decreasing right because more memory means faster execution time but remember cost also increases so you want to find somewhere in the middle a sweet spot uh, so as i said mr beswick supports the argument of mr flinch Uh, that 128 megabit uh, lambda speed suffers a lot so here also as you can see for 128 megabit it, it took a massive time right so he's trying to sub, he, the 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 argument essentially is supported right is what i'm trying to show you uh this is taken from mr jignesh solanki uh, in aws lambda performance tuning and best practices in 2022 uh this is essentially the cold start for different programming languages as you can see the c sharp is not too good and and the fastest is the javascript right and so on so here is a beautiful comparison uh this graph has been taken from uh, his article uh, okay summary and takeaways for python aws lambda try to use arm based system instead of x86 for faster speed and cost to eliminate cold start try to use provisional concurrency for massive bursty traffic power tune your lambdas i have a video where i have showed power tuning lambdas to save cost avoid using 128 meg uh, megabits of memory in your lambda functions uh, it's important that your function uh, it's important that the function only import the libraries and dependencies that uh, they need for example if you need amazon dynamo db in aws sdk you can require an individual service instead of an entire sdk what i mean by that instead of saying from boto3 um, in instead of just saying like import boto3 import specific thing right what you, what exactly do you need so that will again further help you to um, get better performance and and and, and optimize cost okay my further reading topics would be um, i want to see the effect uh, of with and without layers on aws lambda and cold and hot start so i want to essentially see when you add a layers and if you don't add a layer let's say is there a difference in the execution time how slow or fast is that if and then i want to compare with hot and cold start right so i want to do this comparison uh, these are all my references uh, i found an article here i'm i'm i'm, I'm still trying to read that uh, so this article essentially has um, all the information performance of, uh, performance of aws lambda with and without layers so i'm trying to still understand i i haven't com completely read this article but still i'm reading and trying to follow what this gentleman has done Uh, so there are a lot of graphs uh, i'm i'm going to try to read so as you can see layer cold uh, no layers cold so this is how the but uh, it's a little difficult to read box chart uh, it would be nice if the uh, author would have made a bar or a line chart maybe easy to read but uh, this is my further that i want to read for my personal knowledge so i uh, hope you have enjoyed this small takeaways on lambdas uh, with that being said thank you so much for watching if you feel this video is useful and uh, please do uh share with people uh whom you think it will be useful i'll try to leave all the references uh in the description section below so maybe if you want to check that out uh you can uh, take a look at it i'll try my best to maybe write a short summary of an article maybe on linkedin or on my personal blog uh, which will basically summarize all these articles that i have read in a short um you know bullet points right so that's it for this video hope you have enjoyed as far uh, beautiful insights Uh, about all these articles uh, with that being said thank you so much for watching if you have any more questions list your question in the comments and i will try my best to answer your questions uh, if possible with that being said thank you so much for watching keep smiling keep programming keep learning keep sharing and i will see you guys in the next upcoming video